Good evening, humans and non-humans. Welcome to today's video, where I will be teaching you how to access the constants on your calculator, as well as showing you the constants that this calculator has. This is a useful thing to know when you need a particularly accurate answer. Without further ado, let's get started. Push the shift button at the top left of your calculator, and then push the number seven. Uh, as you can see, above the number seven, there are the little words in yellow, C-O-N-S-T, cons, which stands for constant. Then there are several categories of constants. You have these four, and then if you push the down arrow, you can actually access two more categories. I will go through them one by one and show you what they have. I'm not quite sure what all of these are, but if you recognize them and you know how to use them, well, that's good, and that's how you find them. I can tell you what this one is, H, and it's next to the number one, so to get it, you'll just push number one, and it'll show in your calculator. And this H is called Planck's constant. Then the other universal constant that I know is G, which is next to number seven. So to get G, you'll just push number seven. And G is the constant for the universal law of gravitation. And yes, it is very necessary to say it that way. You must sing it. Mm. Next, you have electromagnetic. So to access that, you'll push number two. And here are some constants that it has. Honestly, I don't think I recognize any of these, but if you do, good for you. That's how you find them. Oh, and if you accidentally hit the wrong category, you can just push the left arrow here and it'll take you back to the menu. So next we have atomic and nuclear, and to access that, you'll push number three. These are all the atomic and nuclear constants. There are a lot, and as you'll notice, there are so many that you run out of numbers and it starts giving you letters. So if you want the one next to X, you just push this X button right here. And if you wanted any of the others, for example, M, A, D, or E, B, or any of the others next to a letter, to get the letter, you'll push alpha, which is right next to shift, and then you'll look at these buttons, like on the keypad, and you'll see a pink letter at the top, and that'll tell you which one to pick. So if you want this one, mu E, which is next to the big letter E, you'll push alpha, and then you'll push cosine because at the top of cosine is that pink letter E. And there you go. There's your constant. Next, we have physicochem. And here's the weird thing. This NA here next to three, that's actually moles. So if you've been looking for Avogadro's constant or however you say it, the mole guy, it's actually NA. That's how you find it. Again, here are all the physicochem constants. Um, R right here next to number six, that has something to do with kilopascals, I believe, something to do with pressure. So there's that constant. Don't quote me on that though. I'm not quite sure which pressure unit it has to do with, but it does have to do with pressure. So then if you push the down arrow again, down, you have two more, adopted values and other. In adopted values, you have these. I can tell you ATM here is for atmospheres. I'll push two to get that. Atmospheres, that also has to do with pressure. And then that little g is gravity. So I'll push one for little g. Gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, but apparently it has more than that. So, yeah. And then lastly, we have adopted, uh, sorry, we have other right there. That is the little letter T. That is the number that little letter T gives you. I have no idea what to do with it, but if you do, good for you. 